Okay, let's do another quick scene here. Um, one of the things about photo stamping is that just kind of by nature, I don't know, I guess you can have some kind of longer um, kind of in-depth scenes um, that aren't so quick by the way you finish um, your pieces. But um, by and large, since we have a lot of the the tones and uh, lighting already established in photos, it really makes for a quick um, kind of potential card. All right, so I have a lot of different choices here in terms of photos. Um, I have all of these posted on my Flickr account under um, photo stamping clouds. Now, not all of them are kind of, uh, some of them are, um, are video files, so don't let download those ones. You don't want to, you know, those, I don't think you would, but um, anyways, I had all of these printed out at Costco. A lot of these are duplicates because I figured, you know, I wanted to have a catalog of them available um, for any kind of potential scene that I was going after. And I've adjusted all these. These aren't just cloud photos. What I've done is I've decreased um, the satu um, not the saturation, but um, some sometimes the color and the contrast in a lot of these, because I find that if you have too much contrast in photographs, um, it makes it a little bit more limiting in terms of um, using them with stamps. So I decrease the contrast in uh, many situations, like between the uh, like blue sky and uh, you know white clouds. And sometimes I didn't want the clouds quite so bright. So that, again, you know, so I've kind of desaturated a lot of it. So anyways, it would make it kind of um, a little bit more, I don't know, um, malleable in terms of how we use it. Okay, so that being said, um, I'm just going to use standard dye-based inks. I guess you can use like a, like a Stazon or something like that. But um, the dye-based inks work just fine for photo prints. And I had all my photos uh, printed out at... Um, you know, just your Costco photo center. I don't know if those are open right now, but people get them at Walmart and Walgreens and all kinds of places like that. Okay, this is the Seaside Cove. I'm going to use quite a bit of this. This is a three and a half by five print. I don't think it's a four by six. I think it's a three and a half by five. Yeah, it might be a four by six. I take it back, it's a 4 by 6 right here, okay? Um, so it's going to utilize most of the Seaside Cove small stamp, right? You can use the Seaside Cove large. I'm stamping it with a little bit of space down below, too. Um, kind of beyond the, uh, the front um, uh, little wave. Okay. But you can stamp it all the way down, too. Like, for example, like using the uh, large Seaside Cove, I would probably have it go off the page, I'm not sure. The large Seaside Cove is a very large stamp. All right. So look at that right there. Look at that lighting that's already inherent in the impression itself and the background, okay? But I don't know, these, these stamps... Um, these inks stamp out beautifully just with standard dye-based inks on top of uh, photo paper. It kind of surprises me in some ways, but um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess it shouldn't. Um, it's your, I don't know if this paper right here, too, that they would use at a photo center place like a Costco or whatever. I don't know if it's the same as um, the type of paper that we'd buy for our inkjet printers. I'm not really sure about that. Um, but I would imagine you can do similar types of things. I don't think it's going to be like using a completely different uh, surface um, between your uh, uh, commercially printed uh, prints and... Um, your home, uh, home inkjet printers. Okay, so uh, looking at this print right here, I'm going to stamp out just using some dye-based gray, a little bit of texture down here, okay? And I'll do it in a 
dye-based gray. This one has to be a memento, London Fog. All right, so it looks something like that. It's a little bit more subtle, right? But let's do it two tones. Okay, we'll go with gray. And we'll go with a little bit of black, but maybe I'll blot off the black a little bit before so it's not quite so dark. Okay, and I'll go for multiple impressions of it as well. Alright, so we get that kind of pebbled and kind of gravelly surface there in the foreground. I mean, we could just, you could just stamp on something like this and just leave it as is. But we're going to um, add to it, and embellish, and uh, for me, that's where all the kind of the fun um, and kind of uh, the mood and magic of the piece tends to happen. All right, so let's see here. I'm not super experienced doing photo stamping, so I don't know the exact characteristics. I'm, I want to see, now my black that I used on there, it, it was really juicy. I re-inked this um, fairly recently, so there's a lot of ink in it, and I'm just, I want to know how long it takes for this um, um, surface to dry. But let's go on with some alcohol pens now, okay? And let's just do a little, now this is a really light um, gray here. It's a cool gray number three, you know, if you have some Copic markers, go with one that's, I would say, like a 20% gray, 100% um, being black, and zero being like, you know, a blender pen or something like that, zero. Go with like a 20%, go with something fairly light, okay? All right, now this is working beautifully right here. It's not smearing anything at all. See, I can get right into these shaded areas, okay? You can just take your cues right from the, uh, the design itself, and if there's some darker areas, such as underneath the, uh, the cresting waves, I'm just going in there and reiterating it a little bit. It gives it a little bit more volume and uh, kind of a substance to... It essentially is, which is like, um, it's almost like a fabric or something like that, even though water can be clear. When you see it kind of on the surface, it's kind of like my jacket right here, okay? And these ripples right here, see it as like, um, you know, darkening of the folds, okay? It's not necessarily black and, you know, in the middle here. See, this is like a darker blue, okay? And this is blue up here. Alright, so anyways, I mean, I'm this is stamped in black, and I'm using gray in here, but um, kind of see it as um, that type of um, surface, okay? Or imagine it. And that's where you know how to color, okay? What I'm saying is don't just color in everything uniformly, okay? Kind of hit the shadow areas. Alright, now that was gray. Let's, let's go in here and actually bring it in some colors, okay? Now the gray kind of creates a little bit more volume, all right? Now let's hit it with some color. Let's introduce some colors into it. Now this is a really light shade of blue. I would say that's probably like a 15% blue, you know? And like a dark navy might be 100 or, I don't know, well, not 100, like a 85, 90% gray, okay? So just real light shades. And that's kind of what we're doing here is kind of like it's something akin to um, like black and white photo tinting. It's like taking black and white photographs or something like that and colorizing them like um, people used to do. I don't know in our lifetimes, but sometimes, you know, because there wasn't um, um, color prints at one time we had just black and white photography they would colorize prints and they would be all real pale types of inks that you'd be using to uh, color 
your pieces. I mean, those photo things were all were still around even, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Maybe more recent, I don't know. It was kind of more of a hobby type of thing, not something done out of necessity of, you know, just the absence of color. Um, you know, you'd see it at, um, I'd see it at photo um, stores that I went into, photo supply stores sometimes, and it was usually some dusty old kit that's been on the shelf for years. Okay, but I don't know if you can see that, but there's just this little tint of, of blue in there, which tells me that I think I can go a little bit deeper and uh, darker with that uh, blue. That was kind of, I don't know, it was like a, this one's aquamarine. Let's try this one right here, azure. Okay, now where am I going to use this one? It's darker, right? So I'll, again, I'll use it in the shadows, okay? Now, I, you can use dye-based inks, you know, in coloring something like this. It's just, I'm using these, this, uh, these pens here. They're, they're just very, very convenient. You know, alcohol inks don't, um, they won't blend and put back into solution your dye-based inks. Uh, me meaning, um, it won't dissolve them and smear them in terms of, uh, you know, water, uh, some type of water-based media being on a, you know, going into a water-based print. Okay, so this is what I'm doing here, too. I'm kind of doing these types of motions right here. Do you see how that's kind of tapered? I'm not just going like that, okay? I'm doing this kind of little wispy thing like that, okay? So when I'm coming from this side, I'm kind of wisping it in this way. I mean, from this side, I'm kind of going like that, okay? So I get that nice tapered end to my um, color applications here. Let's see, let's go ahead and add some of this to some of these rocks, maybe. Same thing, you know? If the rocks are a little bit lighter in certain areas, maybe you can add some of this to the darker areas of them, or just kind of vary it a little bit, okay? All right. Now I added the darker tone. I mean, it's definitely not a dark blue, but it's darker than this one. But what I'll do is I'll go back in and I'll just kind of blend that around. Now this is putting back into solution the, the color that I just used, okay? The alcohol ink, but it's not smearing the black. It is kind of dissolving the alcohol blue and just kind of moving it around. It's acting like a blender pen. Okay. All right. Now, well, let's see. Let's go and address, address some of the sand. These are Marvy um, brush markers here. I also have the La Plume. I mean, uh, these are La Plumes. These are the shuttle art ones as well. Okay. So that kind of sandy, peachish color. And add it around in here a little bit. Okay. That was a salmon pink. Okay. Ooh. Sepia. I don't know if I want to use too much of that. Just kind of hit it in a couple little areas, maybe right along that water line. Maybe in some of the background. It's lighter than I th think it's going to be. I can put some trees out there on the horizon too, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. Apricot. Let's blend out some of that, um, dilute and blend out some of that, um, um, Got the name salmon pink or the se sepia. I'm not sure which one it was, the darker one. Okay, and I'll add a little of this down here, just kind of blending it about. It's subtle, okay? I mean, you can make it look more bold if you want it to. Okay, so then isn't that kind of fun? Let's go in, let's make it a little bit more, um, I don't 
don't know, maybe inviting or something. What you can do, we can add a little bit of warmth to this, okay? So I'm going to make some of those blues, make, I'll add a little bit of greenish tinge to it, maybe. I think this is almost too light. I can barely see it. Eh, I can see it a little bit. Just that little bit of green is just adding a, just a touch of uh, another color. Even use some of that down here in the sand. How about that? Can put some of it on the rocks. There's just a little minute, very subtle tinge of color in there. I don't know if you can tell that I've added the, the green over the top. But, you know, it's kind of fun about the uh, those types of um, values. You know, if you have these colors like this, you can just go in and it's not any big commitment to that color. Um, it's just like doing very minute tints. Okay. And uh, you can just build things up accordingly. Let me go with this gray here. Usually I would use um, a, a, a color to do this in a color scheme out of here, but let's go ahead and just use gray here. I don't have a, a huge catalog. I have quite a few colors though. You know, I have this 88 set of uh, shuttle art pens. That cost me 40 bucks. So there's quite a few different colors, but I don't have like every value of every color, okay? So let's just go on with this gray here and let me hit these shadows a little bit more. This is about a, uh, this is cool gray number five. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's, maybe five is a 50%, I'm not sure. It's about a 50% gray, I would say though. Okay of hitting my areas and again I'm just kind of hitting the darker areas okay I just have to look at the design and I'm doing darker areas and if you get too harsh of a mark what do you do all you have to do is you just go back in with your lighter color and blend that out okay spread it around if it's too dark for you How's that look in terms of it being a, you know, kind of a little bit more dimensional? We have that little tinge of color in there. It's kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Let me adjust my camera. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit more like it. hear some screaming going on in the background. That's a, that's a kid playing this game called Minecraft with a bunch of his uh, friends online in a conference call or something. Group chat, I guess. into the foam here a little bit. Okay. Now let's start with some extreme fun in here, okay? All right, now I'm going to put some rays, light beams coming down from some our light source, okay? <laughs> I have to kind of make this uh, little grid here so I can create that um, light source area. You always want it to be uniform, so I just did that little dot up there, so the light beams will be coming down. I'm kind of going with the spirit, you know, there's it's already kind of this, you know, this light um, kind of a lighting theme or scheme already. So I'm just going to go with that. So see, I always want that same vanishing point. That's why I kind of did these little brackets here. Um, all right, your super high-tech light beam mask. Okay, just a piece of paper. All right, 
and let's see here. And your super high tech um, media applicator. Okay, so this is just a plain cotton ball. All right, so white pigment ink. Okay. This is really fun to, uh, this is a, it's a really fun process adding this, um, to a piece, to a scene. And I feel the, uh, the results can be pretty dramatic. I mean, they can be very subtle too, but if you want it, you can have quite an effect the overall, okay? You can use any brand of um, pigment ink. My suggestion would be probably not Brilliance, unless you absolutely know exactly where you want those beams to be and you want them fairly pronounced, okay? Okay, see that light beam coming down from up there? This is going to be really fun. Okay, <laughs> I got to put this back in the bracket there and go to my vanishing point. I might have this ending, this ray ending in the water here. I think, or on the kind of more on the horizon here, um, in this middle portion. I won't have the beam going all the way down. Okay. Now, some of this isn't going to show up very well because I'm stamping kind of light on light. You know, it's white on light, so it doesn't show up quite as much. But I don't know. It's, well, I don't know. It showed up more than I thought. I guess it's whiter than that, um, the print at least. Okay. All right, back in the brackets. Let's go over here. Let's kind of, I'm going to layer this, this beam right here with another kind of wider beam in the background, I think. Let me see here. I'll go like this. So you can layer your beams there. They could be of kind of like a beam over a beam. Okay. like a close beam and a far beam or whatever. Something like that. There's just one in here and let's say that one ends right there, but then there's this other light beam coming down this way. I think maybe in the background too, huh? I think that'd be kind of dramatic. Yeah, we'll go change um, change your widths to beam widths. I, I find that is kind of um, it's pleasant to the eye um, that kind of variation. Okay. Now this one really showed up a lot because of that. Um, you know, that dark cloud in the background there. So see that? Okay, so we'll just keep doing that same type of thing here. I kind of put a little bit more ink towards the, uh, you know, the top of the, uh, the beam. I just, I, I see that as the, uh, it's where the light is emanating from up here. So I, the beam would be stronger, you know, closer to the source. That's, that's my theory at least, you know, or concept.
nice wide one here. You have a nice wide one kind of just ending at the uh, horizon. I'll kind of obscure the horizon line a little bit right there. Snow right there. Boy, that one's really uh, light. I think what's happening too is as this pigment ink dries, as it so often does, it dries darker than what it looks like when it's freshly applied. Even just sitting here like for a minute or I don't know, maybe even seconds. It's changing. Okay, so that being said, you might have to go with a couple different applications and build it up a little bit more or, you know, just um, add, add a little, little bit heavier than you think um, the ideal application of it is. It could be that I'm kind of going over it with this paper too. I don't know if I'm lifting some of it. I don't think so, but it could be. All right, let's see over here. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on because I keep covering up my previous beams as I'm adding the, the current ones, so I can't really see what this one looks like uh, in conjunction with the ones that have already been laid down until I kind of pull it off, so. But that being said, it's like, eh, it all looks pretty good. No matter what you do with these beams, they, they're all, they look fairly dramatic. You know, when you when you add these in like that. See that right there? It's like a stage, huh? It's like a like a disco ball or something like that. You know, all these like light beams coming down. They're kind of out of place too right now. So what we'll do is we'll kind of blend that in a little bit. And let's go for one more out this way. Let's have it kind of ta really tapered and light out here. I like to have some just very kind of subdued. Okay, so I'll just go a few tappings. I won't go heavy. And we'll see if I can just kind of give a little hint of uh, this one up here. Okay, see how it kind of really peters out like that. It kind of makes for a nice one on the side. I think I need one over here, too. It looks kind of harsh like that, right? So let's um, let's taper it off a little bit. Okay. Okay. It's kind of the main feature in this, isn't it? Even though we did uh, the Seaside Cove, which is a very prominent design. Um, I don't know, the, those beams like that are, uh, I don't know, they're really the most significant feature. Um, Attention-wise, I, I think. All right, now let me do a couple more things here. I, I think, like I said, it's it's getting a little bit darker on here, so I'm going to try to add a little bit more prominence to a couple of these. Let's see if I can let's see if I can build it up a little bit. Now this is where sometimes okay, now the brilliance ink. If I you wanted to get a lot whiter and more opaque, though that might work better. To, to then layer that on, you know, to, to vary the beam more. Um, going on with some of the pr uh, brilliance over the top of this one, okay? After you have it already established. So that's what I used to do a lot of times. If I just couldn't get it any lighter using the pig, white pigment ink, what you do is you go with um, a different pigment ink, a different medium 
and that brilliance ink, I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's just, it has a different composition to it, um, so it dries really fast. And that being said, it probably builds up a little bit more. Okay, so see where this, where I'm varying these beams, you know, where they're a little bit lighter in some areas. It gives it a little bit more dimension, huh? Instead of all being kind of flat, the lighter ones look a little bit closer to us. Kind of, I don't know. But like I said, I, I think that's going to kind of dull out again when it dries and sets up, so. Um, all right. I'm not having to use that same vanishing point. I mean, because the beams are already here, so I'm just kind of using those as my guide here. There's my moon from my previous <laughs> couple scenes. The old cutout one. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so that is that. That represents light hitting moisture in the air. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some more of that kind of essence to some of these clouds in here, okay? All right. All right, I'm just using the same. Uh, cotton ball, which is my applicator here. I'm just kind of adding this around in the background and you know, maybe building up some of those clouds a touch. Okay. The cloud, um, the clouds in the photograph, okay. So just kind of adding that in there like so, just so it's not... So the beams aren't the only thing that have this texture, you know, created by the, uh, the white pigment ink, okay? All right, so just kind of building, I'm kind of adding it over some of the tops of some of these other clouds, and I'm kind of adding it where those clouds meet kind of a darker area, okay, within that space, okay? So uh, let's see if we can see it over here, see that texture is a little bit over here and I put it right in there where light meets dark over here a little bit okay let's go kind of just lighten up this whole top portion and what this will do is it'll, it'll kind of blend a little bit all those beams together just slightly okay I mean if I slather it on there it'll put even more but I don't want to do that Okay, now let's go ahead with some of this texture down below here, too. Um, let's see. This is just your standard cotton swab, okay? My recommendation is to go with um, real cotton ones because it's just softer and you can kind of unravel it and it'll give you a nice soft tip. I don't go just straight in with a brand new one. It's, the cotton's too tightly bound and that's why I'd, I don't like using um, those acrylic ones either. They're just, they never kind of um, loosen up enough to give me a real soft applicator. It might be good for certain things, but if you want a real soft touch, it's not really great for that. Okay, so see this right here? I'm adding it around some of these rocks. Let's see here. Let me. Here we go. Kind of adding it around these crashing waves. This is light, so I'm putting it in the lighter areas, okay? Tops of cra some crashing waves. See that rock there? I'll put this mist and foam getting illuminated by the, uh, the light beams. That kind of softness right in there. Okay, now see this right in here where it's really kind of crisp? Let's add a little bit of this over the tops of these cresting waves. Don't do it over all of them, kind of oscillate it a little bit, but 
and have this light coming off the tops of the waves. Now see, that's why I left those waves light. They were light in the design, so I'd use that, um, um, those ink, uh, the markers, the alcohol markers, and I toned underneath them. But on the top, we can add some of this kind of soft light application with the um, white pigment ink. So we're kind of making um, that spindrift coming off the top of the wave nice and uh, frothy and light and illuminated and kind of magic, you know. I think that's where it looks kind of magical in a way. And see the back there on the horizon? I can kind of get rid of that horizon line a little bit. Like it's kind of diffused in a lot of brilliant light that's coming down from, you know, the heavens and whatnot. Like that, or it just kind of disappears, okay? Now remember, I'm going a little bit lighter here because it does dry darker, okay? So you're going to have to use a little bit more than you think. That being said, you don't want to add these blobs, so when I started applying it here, um, I had a really kind of dry application of that ink on here. I didn't go and just straight into my ink and then just go directly. Well, I, maybe on this one I did, I don't know. I, I just use a very light touch and I knew that you can see this right here, it's real um, kind of smashed, you know what I mean? You can see the tops of these ones, they're really smashed. I've used them before. They're good for a few uses. Um, Okay, but look at that. I and mean, that's a pretty effective use of things. And I mean, this coloring process can be easier, you know, when you just, you know, you're barely adding any color down there, but these beams like that, I mean, how much fun can that be? And it's just taking your piece of paper like this. And remember, just stay with your vanishing point, okay? Vary the size of the beams and make some of them a little bit lighter in some areas, a little bit darker, okay? Simple mask and a cotton ball. Okay, now, boy, um, I think this could potentially be pretty nice with a little bit of Dr. Martens in here. What do you think about that kind of splashing ways? All right, I need to clean off my toothbrush here first. Okay. Just your regular everyday little used toothbrush. And Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. If you don't have Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, you can use a, uh, um, a white gel pen like this. Or a Meowzen white acrylic paint pen. Something like that, you know, to add these little splashes to your thing, you know. If you're using a pen, then you're just going dot by dot. This isn't going to take too long, you know, you're not going to add like 5,000 dots or something like that. This one just, this kind of splatter painting technique, is it's really fun. And it's, uh, it can give you a nice varied, kind of random application of these uh, kind of spray patterns. In some scenes it could be, you know, splashing, churning waves at the base, oh, uh, spray at the base of a waterfall. It could be stars up in the night sky or something like that. But in this case, it's just be going to be some kind of crashing waves down here. Let me see if I can get a close-up here, okay? Going on with this. And I'm going to hit some of these waves down here. The larger one, it'd probably be a little bit more effective because this is probably going to get in this whole area, but I don't care. See that right there? It's kind of around here. If you don't like some of it too, if it gets, oh my god, like it, it's up here in the sky too. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. It's like, you know, some beams coming down too. Okay, let's see if I can get this right here. I'm just, I don't usually don't hold it up like this. It's just easier to capture it on camera. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more of a, a targeted area here.
Okay, so there we go. Oh, do you see those little spray dots everywhere? Okay, see like down in here. It's a little bit more random than uh, um, using gel pen. Yeah, okay, there we go. That was a nice splash. Okay, but I know it, it gives a little bit more um, energy to an, a certain area too. Eh, some of it's a little sloppy in some areas. I don't know if I like it. So, I mean, I can just take it and you can just go right in there and just buff it right off. So I'm taking off some of these larger ones. I'm kind of be careful that I'm not kind of getting rid of some of those beams too, because you can wipe off the beam too at this point in time. Um, let's take, let's go with some of this um, gel pen as well. Okay. You want to get more of a targeted kind of highlighting on tops of some of these waves. You can just kind of draw it in there like so. And there's little highlights to the uh, water surface in the background. This is called, um, in photography, they call this specular light. It's light that's brighter than white. And it's those little sparkles, you know, those little um, reflective types of flashes coming off of, uh, you know, surfaces and whatnot. It's like reflected light. So it's not really white, it's, it's light. But that, that's what that type of thing represents. And you can hit little splashing areas too, you know, if you want to get very much more targeted like that too. Okay. If you want to get very, very kind of detailed, you know, subtle, if you're really having fun with um, kind of a surface like this, let's go with uh, something like this. This is a brownish gray here. See these rocks that I added down here? You can add little shadows to them you know, some of them with a, a light tone. I don't know, I just grabbed, it could be a gray or something like this. It's kind of a tinted area down here, so I can add a little bit more shading in some areas, you know, to some of these rocks like that. Okay. Okay, let's see here. All right. I've been using this character a lot. It's just got uh, this horseback rider. Um, or I can come with a kayaker out there in the water, maybe. Um, anything in the foreground would look pretty fun. I think I might go fairly bold, though, with this large character right here. Uh, dare I stamp it right over the top, though, of all that. I don't want to put it over this rock, because that would kind of get into the uh, scene a little bit. I could put, also put um, some other types of foreground here, too, which might be kind of nice. I don't know, I like putting these figures into my scenes. Um, it tends to be, I mean, we can have a scene just like that, as is, but sometimes when you put figures in there, what you do is you, it becomes somewhat more of a transportive type of thing to have some other type of humanity in there. It puts us in the scene or us with that figure that's in the scene, um, which can be kind of nice. Um, or what I was mentioning to someone else um, that recently purchased a lot of the sets and things like that. Um, 
she has a lot of the building blocks and everything like that, but she said, you know, do you see anything that I missed? And I, my comment was, you know, I wouldn't say, call it missing anything, but she didn't have like a lot of animals and birds and things like that. Um, it was all the kind of the land shape figures. But if you put like birds or something like that, or a deer or something like that in some kind of meadow, what you do is you, you kind of, if we're out kind of, you know, walking and uh, on a hike or something like that, usually if you see some sort of animal, it's a very special moment of that hike or a deer, you know. It's when you whisper and you call, you know, your kids over, hey, you know, look at this, you know, type of thing. So you're seeing sometimes the most kind of intimate and special moment of that time. So if you add those into a scene, then it's just that scene is perpetually in that moment, okay? And it's like you're looking out at something like that, okay? So that's with, like, animals. And again, with people, it tends to be more of a transportive type of thing. All right, this is this the lady writer here, um, used in a lot of scenes lately of mine. Okay. And I did that one in a Versify, and it's an oil um, pigment ink. Okay. And I think I'm going to add in some surrounding imagery around here. And let's do... Uh, let's just do some leaves or something like that. It kind of puts us, you know, as a viewer, kind of looking out at that uh, character here, huh? Um, well, that's what it does for me. Um, as a guy, I don't know. I guess I can put my... self and their shoes, but so to speak. Okay, these are just some leaves right here. Like a couple bushes on the sides. Just to kind of get rid of this um, real angular um, type of um, area on the sides here. It just kind of breaks up the form a little bit. And it does add a little bit of a kind of dimension to the scene. Okay. Yeah, I think I want those rocks there, so I won't add too much. Maybe I'll have it coming in like this. So these are supposed to be something that's really close to us now. Now the figure is not the closest thing in the scene. It's the uh, it's these leaves coming in from the side, like so. So it adds it adds depth um, to the piece. Now you have something that's you know a few feet from us. Before the Seaside Cove is the closest thing to us now. It's this, and then it was the uh, the figure and horseback rider, then uh, now it's these leaves, so we have suddenly a lot of depth. And they play off of those um, rays really nicely too, because they add contrast right next to the rays. So the ray by, or the rays by contrast seem lighter than they used to be by having something so dark right, you know, somewhere in the scene. They don't have to be right next to it somewhere in that composition. I guess I could have stamped out those leaves. I don't, they probably could have even been in a dark green in some of these areas, okay? It doesn't have to be in black, but... Alright, so, Lone Rider, going for a ride at the beach, or on the shore. You know, these nice light beams coming in. Going out for a nice afternoon ride. So, I hope you enjoyed the scene. Photo stamping can be quite a bit of fun. And uh, it doesn't have to be kind of a process where it's just like, okay, stamping imagery over the top of a photograph and you're done. 
but it can be that simple too. You don't have to do all these little kind of things in it. But I think just kind of um, adding these um, variations to the waves with the pens, getting that little bit of tone in there is kind of nice. The, the light beams are really the star of the scene, and uh, adding those in like that are really is something that's really fun to do. And then um, the little foreground figures like that gives gives it a little bit extra depth. I'm thinking about maybe I want some birds back in here too. I'm not sure. Maybe kind of nice. Okay, no, I don't want it. Too big. Okay, so anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. If you like this video, hope you hit the like button. And thanks as always for tuning into the channel.